views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Are you ready to stop stress, anxiety, and low self-esteem from running your life? Join award-winning author Dr. Friedemann Schaub from Empowerment Radio as he addresses some of the most prevailing challenges in our day-to-day lives. Find out how you can use the power of your mind to overcome self-sabotaging patterns and build a solid foundation of confidence and self-respect. Learn cutting-edge tools and approach every day with great ease, joy, and purpose. This is the time to empower yourself. Now, here's your host, Dr. Friedemann Schaub. Welcome, welcome to Empowerment Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Friedman. Looking forward to another hour of talking about breakthrough solutions for confident living. Now, today we're going to take on a big topic, which will be a topic that we will talk about more. It's a topic that's dear to my heart. And it's something that I think most of us are really dealing with which is living in survival mode, which means basically that we are living driven by fear, driven by obligation, driven by this idea that we just have to hold our head above water, just making it through the day. How can we get out of this survival mode? How can we actually switch into a different way of living, thriving, maybe being creative, or just plainly enjoying our existence here. What do we need to do? Now, the other day, I had an experience which reminded me of the importance of perspective and also the importance of gratitude and humility. We were sitting in a train when the announcement came through that they were looking for a doctor in the train. And so I went and looked for the conductor, what's going on, and he said, well, there is a woman who collapsed, can you please come? So I went with him and found a woman who apparently had fainted. She was uh, young, mid-20s, from Africa, had a, turns out, eight-week-old baby with her, and she was completely dehydrated. She was malnourished and basically homeless, didn't have a place to be. Her family was all in Africa, and on top of it, she was HIV positive and didn't have her medication because she had no money to get the medication. So I looked at this woman and uh, really felt like that this is a person who basically is just really fighting for her survival and the survival of her little baby that was, on top of it, premature born. So it was very tiny. And just being able to help her by being there and talking with her and just making sure that she's okay, and that in itself made me certainly feel good. But I noticed that the people in this compartment all were just gathering around her and giving her Coke to drink, a sandwich, a blanket. Another person was holding the baby and trying to comfort it. It was an outpouring of support and compassion that really just made me feel uh, confirmed in this belief that we do have all real goodness inside of us and that we are able to reach out and support each other when needed. So in that moment, I realized this woman who really is in survival mode made all of us probably feel really blessed and grateful for what we have and made us want to reach out to her and help her. I don't know what happened with her because then the fireman came at the next stop and took her to the hospital and Maybe we can all just collectively send her 
our best thoughts and wishes and this baby as well so that she does get that support and that help that is so really needed in her life right now. I have been in survival mode many times in my life and probably one of the worst survival modes was when I worked in a university hospital in cardiology and just was stressed out of my wits. And so survival mode doesn't necessarily have anything to do with how much you earn or what position you have or how your life looks like externally. It is just an internal way of approaching life. And this show and many others will show you some ways and teach you some tools to really gradually and gently shift out of the survival mode. And as a special guest today, the first guest of Empowerment Radio, I have invited an expert, an expert in the shift of consciousness, which is the amazing Danielle Hoffman, who I'm very happy to say is also my wife and life partner. So I'm glad that she can join me from the room across the hall <laughs> and is with us here. Now, Danielle is, a, is really just a, a magical, wonderful person, not only because I love her, but she has been just one of the leaders in the shift into unity consciousness here in the world. She is an award-winning author of the Temples of Light and the Council of Light. She is the creator of DivineTransmissions.com. She is an intuitive. She is transmitting wisdom from Thaws and the Council of Light that she has a direct energy and uh, connection with. And she is basically helping people, whether it's visionaries, intuitive coaches, or just people like you and me to live more from a place of purpose, to overcome fear, shame, or doubt, and create the life they desire. And I'm just so happy to welcome here on the show. Hi, Danielle. Thank you for joining us. Mm. Hi, Friedman. I'm so happy to be here and delighted that you have your your radio show. It's really a joy for me to to witness and you have one of the biggest hearts I know that you shared uh, in the story and so I'm glad that everyone that's listening has access to you and I'm excited to co-create an awesome show today. Thank you. I mean, you can tell we are right now doing a blushing competition. Who can make the other blush more? <laughs> I think she probably won once again. So thank you very much. <laughs> but, you know, I wanted to just ask you about survival mode and uh, tell us a little bit what you see in people when it comes to survival mode. What are we struggling with? Mm hmm. Yes, well, I would extend it to be survival consciousness and that, you know, one of the things I noticed when we were going to Egypt a lot was that there are just as you described, there are different kinds of uh, ways of being and that the people in Egypt really have this heart-centered relationship uh, thriving or wealth and uh in in the western world sometimes there can be this lack of of uh that relationship wealth so to me survival consciousness really is a sense of lack whether that's a lack of abundance of resources money uh or or connection relationships and that we really are in this greater shift from survival consciousness into unity consciousness. And so a lot of what I see uh, with people that are in survival consciousness is a fear of being seen, a fear of being visible, a fear of standing out, a fear of uh, really being who they are, the fear of, of being uh, in some ways expressing who they are and then losing love or being ostracized or somehow in danger. And so that's uh, 
some of what I would describe as as survival consciousness. And then it leads to certain ways of being, like caring more about what other people might think about ourselves than we care about uh, about us than we care about ourselves or uh, people pleasing or then trying to tone down who we are and our gifts and talents. So that's, that's a little bit of, of the viewpoint that I would bring forward about survival consciousness. And yes, I completely agree. And isn't it true that when we are in this survival com- consciousness, we do really consider more this protecting ourselves, just, you know, either being small and maybe uh, invisible or just trying to earn our keep by overdoing it and overgiving and overpleasing rather than really wondering, what am I up to here? What is actually what is my contribution or what brings me a sense of joy, what brings me a sense of fulfillment? And that's certainly a shift that uh, both of us have been really focusing on in our work. Now, when we come back, if you have any questions for Danielle or me, please call at 888-418-6890. Again, that's 888-418-6890. Danielle does also do body readings and intuitive readings for anyone who has a question for her. So let's get the phones ringing when we come back. Are you ready to stop stress, anxiety, and low self-esteem from running your life? Join award-winning author Dr. Friedemann Schaub for Empowerment Radio and learn breakthrough solutions to switch out of survival mode and approach every day with great ease, joy, and purpose. Tune in the first and third Wednesday at 11 a.m. Pacific to Empowerment Radio with host Dr. Friedemann Schaub on Transformation Talk Radio. Visit the fearandanxietysolution.com to learn more. Transformation Talk Radio is dedicated to the education and awareness of Lyme disease. Hey everybody, welcome back to Lyme Talk Radio. I'm Dr. Pat, joined here by Dr. Nusheen Darvish. Dr. Pat Basili and Dr. Nusheen Darvish will be bringing the most innovative, groundbreaking information, research, treatment innovations, and stories from those it affects every day. I'm so excited to be talking about this. We have so much to share. Dr. Darvish and I are planning to do is connect the dots. People suffering with all sorts of chronic diseases it's time. It is time for them to transform. Tune into Lime Talk Radio and help keep our mission strong. For the loyal listeners out there that have been listening to this incredible show on Lyme disease, we are not going to let you down. We're going to come through stronger and enrich the platform for Lyme disease awareness through Lyme Talk Radio. The message will continue. The conversations will become stronger and the healing epic. If you're dealing with fear and anxiety, you've probably noticed that the more you fight these emotions, the stronger they seem to get. Dr. Friedemann Schaub, the author of The Fear and Anxiety Solution, explains that instead of suppressing, we need to identify and resolve the deeper, subconscious root causes of fear and anxiety. His personal breakthrough program has helped thousands worldwide to overcome their emotional challenges. To learn more, visit thefearandanxietysolution.com and schedule your free consultation with Dr. Schaub now. Get into it for 2016. Do you want more prosperity, clarity, energy, and balance in your life? Join Lynn Brown now through March for one of her amazing workshops, each focusing on a key part of living your best life. For more information and to register for one of these amazing workshops, visit lynnbrownevent.com. That's lynnbrownevent.com. And get into it this 2016 with Lynn Brown. Are you anxious and worried? Do you feel stuck with fear and insecurity? Dr. Friedemann Schaub, the award-winning author of The Fear and Anxiety Solution, has developed a breakthrough program which has helped thousands worldwide to overcome their emotional challenges. If you are ready to end your struggles with fear and anxiety, join Dr. Friedemann for his upcoming breakthrough webinar, which starts on April 30th. Visit thefearandanxietysolution.com to find out how you can overcome your anxiety for good.
Welcome back to Empowerment Radio. Today with me, Dr. Friedman, and Danielle Hoffman, who is our very special guest. And again, if you have any questions for either of us, call 888-418-6890. Before the break, we talked about survival consciousness and what that means in a in a day-to-day life. Now, Danielle, you are working very much with the the energies of people and uh, and really also have probably witnessed on an energetic level what happens when someone leaves themselves in order to fit in or play small or just be in that staying safe survival consciousness. What do you notice there? Mm-hmm. Yes, great question. Well, another way that I would talk about survival consciousness is also separation consciousness. And that separation consciousness of duality, of whenever we would go into feeling separate from ourselves or leave ourselves, uh, duality in general in terms of right and wrong and up and down and, and those kinds of things. So that sense of feeling separate from who we are and feeling separate from our multidimensional self or our divine self and that this really is a larger shift in consciousness, into unity consciousness of of collaboration, love, uh, oneness, and uh, you know, I think that's what you your story on the train talked about too. Is is that energy of everyone coming together, collaborating for this for this woman to be in unity consciousness uh, around this woman. And so being that I work with energy and consciousness uh, and and also beings of light, what I really began to notice, especially with supporting people and actualizing their dreams, uh, was that when they would go to create and they would they would go to be in an empowered state that their what I would call their signature energy, their unique vibration and essence, it, it would turn on. And then it it would turn off because they would be afraid. And I've experienced this too of of really sharing powerfully my gifts and talents and then having that sensation uh, of terror that I'm that I'm going to be killed or lose love or those kinds of things. And and so as a signature energy, and you could think about it like a light, it 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 vacillates, then then the universe doesn't really know how to respond to us. So a lot of times it's like if you were to order something off the internet and and you you've placed your order and that's like your signature energy is being strong, it's shining brightly, you're visible, uh, and and then you forget to put your address or you move in the meantime, and then that's the signature energy turning off. And so the way that people would feel that or sense that is that after they do make a forward movement, then maybe they have doubt that comes up or they feel like they, rather than doing what they really love, they're, they're doing what they think other people might want them to be doing. So that's a little bit of what I see on an mm-hmm. energy and, and vibrational level. Now you mentioned the, the divine self, and uh, you know you obviously are working with higher beings and uh, divine teachers and and that's something that's very familiar that's you know just uh, the gang that you're hanging out in some ways you could say but uh, let's say that you know we are in a place of survival consciousness and the only thing that we have been relying on was maybe our head, our intellect, was just the idea of, okay, I have to figure it out, I have to make a plan, I, I have to keep myself safe through, by being smart and rational. And how does a person then find the way to actually go beyond this separation consciousness, this idea of it's all up to me, I'm all on my own, the world is a hostile place, and shift into this maybe more divine self-consciousness? What would you recommend someone how to get there? Mm -hmm. Well, in some ways, that really is the evolution from thinking that we are our 
thoughts and our feelings and our our bodies, what we can see into really the multidimensional beings that we that we are. And so the tools that I would suggest for that process is really a stopping of whatever we're doing to pretend that we're powerless or a stopping of whatever Mm -hmm. we're doing to separate from ourselves, to really allow the authentic, uh, expression and, and vibration to, to come forward. So for example, if someone is using their intellect and feeling like they have to do it all alone, they can utilize that same energy to really highlight their intuition or or that which is which is there so in some ways i think it's a it's a it's a stopping of of what it is that we're doing and you know i love the council of light they talk about this in terms of you know imagining that if if you're born 100 years ago and uh, you, you you didn't know what the telephone was and then somebody's trying to describe to you what the telephone is and and then somebody who lives then to experience the telephone they they just all the idea of it in the beginning that somebody could just call them from the other side of the world it just seemed crazy and then the, it's every day and then it expands more to to be now you can have a cell phone and you can call in from anywhere so i think that's a little bit like the the shift from separation consciousness into unity consciousness is that it's simultaneously a dismantling of the ways that we're used to being that really aren't working because I think the person that's using their intellect only or feeling like they have to do it all alone, they're, they know it's not working and into then really stepping into the unknown in some ways and, and stepping into those uh, ways of being that, that haven't been experienced fully yet. I can totally relate to this because I certainly have been a person who was very much in his head and, uh, you know, being German didn't help. So planning and being uh, in a place where I needed to control and micromanage and make sure that all the ducks are in the row, uh, that was just how I functioned. And uh, interestingly, that's not how I always functioned Danielle often laughs about this, but uh, I was actually, when I was little, a very happy, go lucky, daydreaming child. And then at some point, that other side of me kicked in, and that was more the planning side. And, and there was a lot of survival consciousness about this because I did feel that I needed to really use this rational mind uh, in order to, to get ahead in life. And then at some point when I realized that actually I didn't get ahead and, you know, I did lose my job. I was in a place where I didn't know where to go. And uh, all of a sudden there was the intuitiveness inside. Well, I didn't lose my job, but I basically, you know, ended my contract. And anyhow, the problem was I didn't know how my career would continue. And my intellect was basically only sending me question marks one after another. And all of a sudden, there was more an inner voice that came out of that not knowingness that clearly told me, you need to go to America. You need to go to the U.S. That's the next step for you. And my intellect said, are you crazy? Who do you think you are? And that inner voice just kept on really pushing. It was this intuition that just knew better. And I think that was one of those examples that you just mentioned Rather than following the impulse of doing that, what we are used to do to survive, just stopping and maybe listening and maybe just getting a sense of that inner voice that whatever you want to call it, the divine self, your inner advisor, the truth of who you are, that has an impact when you give it some space, when you give it some room to communicate and uh, is there anything that you danielle would say is a is a great technique or something that you feel helps you to get tuned in to this inner connection Mm -hmm. well i really believe that our inner connection is where that sense of peace and uh 
oneness and unity comes from and and that's also what we what we can can shift and so a lot of the the work that I do and the tools that I have and the focus that I have really is the on the interconnection and you know one thing that comes to mind uh, that's also a part of Toast Magic Academy a program that I offer is equanimity and that equanimity is that capacity to to be that eye in the storm or to come back to the center when we've left it or to come back into that that state of connection and a part of equanimity really is a quality and the recognition that we are all equal and so also the work that I do with the uh, with Toth and the Council of Light it's from that place of equality peer to peer eye to eye divine to divine and that there isn't anyone that knows better than another one what's uh, what's better for you than than you might know yourself and so really having those tools and those techniques that when when we do leave our center, when we do go into separation consciousness, that uh, there are those ways of coming back more quickly. And for me personally, you know, I, I love to be in nature. I love walking. I There are certain things that, that just really nourish that and support that to, to being able to to come back to that connection more quickly and also having it as the number one priority in some ways to say, well, uh, that connection to yourself and to source is the top priority and that there's nothing in the outside world that, uh, is, is taking you out of that. Or if it does, and then you come back to it quickly. So I think everyone has their own version of what brings them into that, into that state of joy. For me, it's nature. And I think Mm -hmm. also Mm -hmm. appreciation and gratitude, like you spoke about at the beginning of the show is, um, is a way to shift quickly as well. Yeah. And, um, when we come back, we want to talk more about how we can connect to that inner center, that, uh, that truth of ourselves, that divine self, and, and also raise an important question. Do we need to have a spiritual belief in order to connect and believe in unity consciousness? Let's talk about this when we come back. dealing with fear and anxiety, you've probably noticed that the more you fight these emotions, the stronger they seem to get. Dr. Friedemann Schaub, the author of The Fear and Anxiety Solution, explains that instead of suppressing, we need to identify and resolve the deeper, subconscious root causes of fear and anxiety. His personal breakthrough program has helped thousands worldwide to overcome their emotional challenges. To learn more, visit thefearandanxietysolution.com and schedule your free consultation with Dr. Schaub now. The 24th Annual WOW Conference, United We Change the World. Featured guests are Dr. Christine Page on Creative Dragon Energy. Dr. Susan Shumsky will show you how to awaken your third eye. And Mira Kelly will present a two-day intensive workshop on Beyond Past Lives. This February 11th through the 15th. Go to thewowconference.org. That's the W-O-W conference.org. Are you ready to stop stress, anxiety, and low self-esteem from running your life? Join award-winning author Dr. Friedemann Schaub for Empowerment Radio and learn breakthrough solutions to switch out of survival mode and approach every day with great ease, joy, and purpose. Tune in the first and third Wednesday at 11 a.m. Pacific to Empowerment Radio with host Dr. Friedemann Schaub on Transformation Talk Radio. Visit the fear and anxiety solution.com to learn more. Tune in.
in to Sheer Alchemy with Leslie Fontaine on TransformationTalkRadio.com and get ready to stir up your passions, identify your blocks, and shift into an entirely new existence. Leslie Fontaine is a transformation catalyst and clairvoyant who uses her intuitive and energetic gifts to catapult listeners into living the life they were born to live. Whether it's shifting from scarcity to abundance, from emotional pain into joy, or from illness into health, Leslie will help you step into the true essence and power of all that you are with the help of the Ascended Masters and Archangels. You will not be the same. Visit TransformationTalkRadio.com for show dates and times and LeslieFontaine.com to say yes to explosive abundance. Are you anxious and worried? Do you feel stuck with fear and insecurity? Dr. Friedemann Schaub, the award-winning author of The Fear and Anxiety Solution, has developed a breakthrough program which has helped thousands worldwide to overcome their emotional challenges. If you are ready to end your struggles with fear and anxiety, join Dr. Friedemann for his upcoming breakthrough webinar, which starts on April 30th. Visit thefearandanxietysolution.com to find out how you can overcome your anxiety for good. Welcome back to Empowerment Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Friedman, with my lovely and amazing, magical, talented wife, Danielle Hoffman. Danielle, maybe you can just uh, let the listener know how you how they can reach you. And also, as far as I know, you have a special gift for the listeners. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes. So... As we're talking about, well, how really can people shift from survival or separation consciousness into unity consciousness? I've created a Divine You five-day unity consciousness uh, event that is a combination of videos and audios. And they can access that on divinetransmissions.com forward slash gift. And that's D-I-V-I-N-E-T-R-A-N-S-M-I-S-S-I-O-N-S dot com forward slash gift. And yeah, there's really uh, videos about how to shift any allergy or resistance to being all of you, including being extraordinary, how to be in communion with your higher self and your divine helpers how to remember your capacity to create through energy and vibration. So uh, they can get that gift at divine transmissions forward slash gift. And it's also um, a way to sample my upcoming program, Toast Magic Academy, which is a year and a day video program. Uh, So they can, they can check it out there as well. And this video program is truly life-changing, and uh, it's something that people that have done this before are just reporting how much by you know doing the daily transmissions and connecting daily to that uh, that self inside that just has connection to all the wisdom and connection to all these inner resources has made them feel more. Uh, at ease with living full on and being their authentic selves and and also has them really encouraged and uh, in some ways has been the catalyst for quite some wonderful life-changing decisions whether it was uh, starting to write a book or moving or uh, really pursuing a new career all of those things uh, have been uh, happening as a consequence of this thoughts magic academy so i can highly recommend it but Danielle, we talked before the break about uh, unity consciousness, and I know from my own work and talking to so many people that that having a, a spiritual belief 
is not really what everyone would say, you know, subscribing to. Some people are recovering uh, Catholics or having any kind of religious background that they feel at some point just uncomfortable with. Maybe the nuns were too harsh or maybe they just felt like there was too much dogma. And so they don't really have a kind of uh, spiritual connection. Do you believe that in order to have this kind of awareness of unity consciousness, and again, what does it actually mean, unity consciousness, do you have to have a spiritual belief? No. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Let's move on. Yeah, it's a it's a beautiful question and I think it goes back to really being you full out and that that really is the easiest way to navigate all the changing times because uh my sense is that pretty much everyone on the planet right now has a sense that things are are changing and that the easiest way to navigate those changes are to be who you are to be yourself fully and so to be authentic for some people that may be that they're an atheist or that they they love nature or that they believe in in god or that they have a a sense of uh beings of light and and so it's not about uh, from my perspective getting someone into a spiritual evolution if that's not what is really authentically who they are. And yet, with that being said, the reason that I love working with vibration, energy, and consciousness is that everything is energy and consciousness and that the scientists are proving that, that at the level of the quantum field, that there's this awareness of everything being energy. And so another way to look at the shift in consciousness is also evolving your energy to to be congruent with who it is that you are to raise your vibration from fear or doubt or shame into that that energy of joy abundance connection collaboration and do you have a feeling then that uh, you personally can tell a difference whether you are in unity consciousness or where you, whether you're in separation consciousness. And how does that look like for you? Yes, I can feel the difference. And I think that brings up a really important point that it's not about trying to get rid of separation consciousness or survival consciousness because that is rocket fuel for our evolution. It's rocket fuel for this uh extraordinary time that we're in and so i think that's another way to look at unity consciousness that it's living from the heart and the vibration of love and the vibration of love is really one of the highest vibrations on the planet and love includes everything so consciousness includes all that there is and so having tools where we can include the parts of ourselves that we may not like or may not prefer that we can welcome it and recognize that every experience that we've had uh, throughout our lifetime is, is, has added purpose and created, uh, helped us create who it is that we are. And so uh, for me, some of the ways when we look at how to move from survival into empowerment, how to feel, uh, move from feeling powerless to empowered, some of the ways that have really worked for me and continue to work for me is is creating is one of my favorite ways you know i i'm like a creating uh machine en- energizer <laughs> funny i just love creating i think one of the reasons that I, I love creating so much is that when I'm in that creative flow and especially, you know, that connection where I create with source or bring in bodies of work uh, with the beings of light, that I'm accessing the, the the design that I have, that divine design that I have to be a creator being. So I think that, that creation or creating 
can be something that really helps people move from that sense of powerlessness to being empowered. And that's also why I love to support people in midwifing their unique bodies of work, uh, writing books, creating programs, those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. So when you're not very creative, then you feel kind of not really connected to your unity consciousness. Well, that's one of the spaces that I feel connected to it. And then, of course, when I'm divinely transmitting, uh, when I'm connecting to the beings of light and bringing in vi vibration and frequency, to me, that's also a place where I feel really, really connected and in that space of, of unity consciousness. If you have any questions for us, for Danielle or me, please call 888 418 Six eight nine zero. It sounds like the phone lines haven't been working at the beginning of the show. So, if you had a question, if you wouldn't want to have a divine transmission by Danielle or a body reading, just call in eight 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 four one eight six eight nine zero. Now, one of the things that you just mentioned about the the this importance of also embracing and including the things we are uncomfortable with is exactly what I work with in regards to fear and anxiety. Because isn't it true also in your perspective that often fear can actually just show us whether we are really connected to our authentic self or not? So that fear and anxiety are not necessarily about external danger or anything that may threaten us, but more almost like a GPS system that tells us how we are connected to ourselves. And when we do have this connection to our more uh, authentic and true self, when we're really more anchored in that consciousness, in that unity consciousness or in our spirit or soul, whatever we want to call it, then the fear and the anxiety disappear. Is that also your experience? Yes, and there's that awareness as well that as there's the inclusion of the fear, then that it's welcome, that it, that it is honored for the role that it has and for the job that it's been doing. And that if we can look at it as a scout or uh, an ally, then it, it can inform us of amazing things. So mm -hmm. I, I think it's another opportunity to include. And, and again, I, to me, It can also be a signal of, well, I've left myself, I've left my connection with source and I've gone into fear. And that also helped me a lot is rather than then really trying to identify what it, what is happening to just see it as a signal of, okay, that connection has gone into disconnect and I'm going to bring myself back to, to a place of connection. So I think that can be really helpful for people too, because sometimes, uh, there are those infrastructures that we have or those, the path of least resistance where it's a repetitive pattern. And, uh, you know, one of the things that the council of light says that I just love is that there's more to be gone from unity consciousness than there is from repeating another repetitive pattern, I'm paraphrasing, uh, again, because I think that we've learned pretty much, we may not have integrated those learnings, I know that's also what you do in your work, but we've learned pretty much everything there is to learn from those repetitive patterns, and so there is more to be garnered from, for the person that is used to doing everything alone, to have someone to collaborate with, to, mm -hmm. to try something different, to get on a different feedback loop. Mm -hmm. Now... When you talk about the Council of Light, I mean, obviously for you, this is quite, uh, you know, familiar territory. Who are the Council of Light? Mm -hmm. Well, the Council of Light is a group of intergalactic light beings whose purpose is to enhance the vibration of joy and therefore health, wealth and abundance. And You know, there's a lot of support that we have, whether it's uh, the level of the intuition or the higher self or how I would uh, experience it, that there are beings of light. Uh, some people may call them angels or ascended masters, uh, helpers, guides, 
co-creators for me, uh, you know, Thoth, Toth, uh, is, is my business partner that I really work directly with him. And, you know, I think in some ways it's easier to provide an experience of, of the council of light than it is necessarily to, to define them. Cause as I was saying, my definition, I could see how well, for some people that really didn't clarify it. <laughs> Well, let's have an experience. So there is a uh, uh, on the chat line on the in the question uh, box that people can fill out when they visit the Transformation Talk Radio. There is a question: How do we break repetitive patterns in our life? Like I always seem to pick a loser for a relationship. Thank you for this question. What would the Council of Light say to that? Mm. And this is the Council of Light and many other beings of light that are moving more to the forefront of this divine transmission. And we would begin by transmitting or extending offering on the offering plate the emerald ray and the emerald ray is the u ray the vibration and consciousness that really creates a a comfortable connection with your unique self your unique vibration and so You can connect to the emerald ray by imagining the color emerald or imagining the times that you've really felt most connected to who it is that you are, those people that you're around where you can just be yourself and that the you ray the emerald ray and the increasing of your signature energy, your unique vibration acts like a a key. And in response to the question, that's really what would be the first uh, order of business in some ways is to in vibrationally change the locks of this lock and key pattern that you've had, that you've had you being the key that then when you choose a relationship, you're consistently choosing someone who's who's not a necessarily a loser yet they're not there for you and that's what we're sensing is really what it is that you're wanting in a relationship is somebody who can bring to the table and engage with you and match you in the way that you also have uh, the capacity to do so just like if uh, after somebody moved out you'd go and change the locks so that their key doesn't work anymore vibrationally you can do this as well and to really call back the aspects of yourself that you may have left in past people places and times and and for the person that submitted the question that's the focus to to have is to really uh, call back the parts of you that you may have left in past people, places, and times and have that be the key that unlocks your locks. And that that really is what many people are asking for at this time is to be matched, to be in partnership, to collaborate, to co-create, to have a space where you can show up as your extraordinary and your brilliant self. And so as we, the Council of Light, are here and have come forward, that's also another purpose that we have, to be with the totality of you, to be with the fullness of you, to be with your extraordinary self, and then as such, there's the encouragement and the welcoming in of more it is more of who it is that you are thank you and i I may want to add that of course you probably know that there is also you know the relationship that you're picking a reflection on the relationship with yourself and you may want to just also reflect on what the Council of Light and Danielle said in regards to do you feel that you deserve someone who is actually really there for you? Do you have a feeling that you are playing it small the way you are choosing relationships? And are those relationships and how they treat you and how you feel treated by them, are they mirror images and how you may treat yourself and how you may relate to yourself. 
So breaking the pattern is not about changing your picker and you know choosing just different categories in relationships, but maybe it's more about really investigating what do I need to change in my relationship to myself? How do I need to give myself that what I'm trying to find in others so that you're not coming into a relationship from a place of lack, but that you're actually coming in a relationship from a place of fullness with a desire to share who you are rather than feeling like you need something from the other person. So I hope that helped you. Now, Danielle, I noticed when you were connecting to the Council of Light that uh, you really shift your energy and you really, not only your voice is changing, but also the way you speak and what comes through to you. And uh, it always amazes me because you you do this so effortlessly. But uh, I have to say, I know that you're incredibly talented and smart, but sometimes when you do these divine transmissions, things come through that I realize, wow, that, that's not you. That is someone else who goes way beyond that what, you know, I am used from you, which is wonderful. I mean, this is something that is just uh, – now, how do you do this? Can you just give us a, a minute of explaining what happens when you're stepping aside and let that wisdom come through? And do you believe that we all can do this for ourselves? Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, there is the intuition that everyone has and that that sense of what isn't seen that can be accessed. And so it is a, a quieting, a deepening, a, a stepping aside, as you said, and then a, a plugging in like plugging into uh, more and more units of consciousness. And then the flow, it, it is just fluent and fluid. And so it is something that everyone has access to, yet in their unique way, and that each person is already doing it. So perhaps tuning into the way that, that you're doing it naturally and the way that it shows up for you. It could just be that uh, while you're driving somewhere, you decide to go in a different direction or that while you're taking a shower, you have an amazing idea. And and so, yes, it is a capacity that uh, everyone has and it is also something that can be developed. Uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. Now, there is another question and I hope we just have a a few minutes left to answer this question, which is, uh, I can't get over a love I had 30 years ago. Although I'm married and reasonably happy, how do I let go of uh, of this after all these years? Maybe you can tap into the wisdom and see what you're getting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And is there something you're getting first? Yeah, my sense is just that there is the person that you were 30 years ago and the person that you're now are two different people. So what you may be longing for is not necessarily the person that you feel you were in love with 30 years ago, but maybe who you were when you were in love with that person. Maybe you were much more free. Maybe you were much more filled with curiosity or adventure or spontaneity and in this association that you make with that those inner resources the ways you have been expressing yourself at that time you have not necessarily made with yourself but you have made more with that person that you are seeing still in your mind as that uh, you know like you said before that lock and the key So try to find out what it is, what you really are missing. Is it yourself and those aspects that you maybe in the last 30 years have forgotten? And how can you bring those back to yourself? And we have only one minute left, but uh, Mm -hmm. what does does Danielle and the council say to that? Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And that 
there is this capacity to recognize vibration. And so as there has been the emerald ray that's been transmitted, we would also invite everyone to recognize that they're recognizing vibration as as you're going throughout the day and perhaps uh, there's a recognition in in Thoth's Magic Academy a recognition in divinetransmissions.com for and and the gift that's there that forward slash gift the divine you event and to really recognize it as you're going throughout your day you are this lock and key and unlocking those perfect people places and experiences so perhaps this empowerment radio show is something that you've left for yourself to find thank you so much if you want more information for about danielle's work go to divinetransmissions.com for that very special gift that she offers everyone it is divinetransmissions.com forward slash gift. And if you would like to know more about the work I'm offering, the personal breakthrough empowerment sessions, or the uh, seminar that starts in April, just go to thefearandanxietysolution.com. All in one word, thefearandanxietysolution.com. Thank you, Danielle, so much for being a part of the show. It was really wonderful. I know you're going to be back. I just can drag you to the microphone. It's not far. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you, Justin, for doing a great job also uh, with uh, being the producer of today's show. I thank all the listeners and everyone who was sending in their questions. And uh, we will, in two weeks again, be on with the next Empowerment Radio Show. Well, goodbye and have a wonderful You've day. You've been listening to Empowerment Radio with Dr. Friedemann Schaub. Join Dr. Friedemann the first and third Wednesday each month at 11 a.m. Pacific as he addresses some of the most prevailing challenges of our daily lives. Discover how you can use the power of your mind to overcome stress, anxiety, and overwhelm and create a solid foundation of confidence and self-esteem. Learn cutting-edge tools so that you can approach every day with great ease, joy, and purpose. To learn more about what Dr. Schaub can do for you, visit the Fear and Anxiety.